Oh no. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I've been saying all of the numbers wrong. Oh man. Every single one is wrong. Um, that's fine. We'll it's just okay. put a disclaimer at the beginning. That's okay. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You'll see I am back in this noodle of doing things. <laughs> I'm so still going. You know what, it's fine. I'm, I just want this, this is just gonna be a fun video. It's gonna be a fun time. I'm back in Janelle's basement, AKA the studio, because Janelle's now home for Toronto. Yes. And staying just for a little bit. I mean like, oh no, COVID, but she's staying. So I'm okay with it for now. Um. So today I will be ranking everything I read in 2021, which is similar to I did this last year for what I read in 2020, and it's actually one of my first videos on this channel. And you will see a lot of reappearing books that I have reviews on, but I will let you guys know when that's one of them. So let's just get right into it. I wish I didn't say that every time, but now it's just happened. What? Let's, let's just get, get right into, into it. it. And then the intro plays. So technically I have 19 books actually here with me. That's a lot, okay. Technically I have 19 books that I'm ranking, but two of them I don't have actual physical copies of. Um, there were three more books that I read but I'm not including in this. One of them was Panic, which I... <laughs> One of them was Panic, which I reread, and so that's why I'm not including it. And we did a whole video on that that actually just came out with Janelle and Grace both in it where we, I reviewed the book and then we all talked about the TV series. So that should, that's up now, so go check that out. Um, I'm just not gonna be talking about that one because I reread it, so anyway, same as The City Bones, I had to reread for a class, had to. Uh, and also Beowulf, which I had to read <laughs> for a class, and I accidentally somehow put it on my like reading challenge on Goodreads, so if you see that there, I'm actually not counting it or ranking it. Starting off, technically that means I have 19 to do, so the number 19, shocker, um, This Is Not A Ghost Story by Andrea Portes. I did a video review on this, which is also out now, and I really did not enjoy this book. Um, I think I rated it two stars, which might be the lowest. <gasps> it's okay, it's fine. He's just dancing. That might be the lowest I've ever rated a book that I didn't ha like have to read for school which I say in the review. Um, and I'm not gonna get super into it because I got a lot of books to get through and I don't necessarily have any nice things to say. Um, but there were some people that commented on the video and said, oh, I really liked this book. And it's like, that's the thing. Maybe for somebody else, it's it's a good fit. Just for me, it personally wasn't. No. Oh, wait, 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 no, 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 no. There's one before that one. There's one before that one. So it's actually not, it's actually not number 18. So let's, <laughs> okay. let's take a deep breath here. Um, so where I'm just going to insert a picture. This next book that I read is the second book in the Cellar series by Natasha Preston, which actually was never published, um, but I really liked the Cellar. It's in the stack, so I will get to that, but it was good. It was good. I don't think I actually have a video on it. I don't remember, but I was interested to see what would happen. I'm not going to explain what it is, but it's basically like the aftermath of the first one. And it wasn't necessary, in my opinion, which is probably why it wasn't published. Um, I think that it could have been twisted a little bit more and then made into a really good published book, but there was a lot of errors in it, which again, it's just it's just a woman writing on Wattpad. That's where I read it. So um, I now have an account there. You can follow me at stories underscore books, which is the same as the Instagram, just a little promo. I don't know that I'll get into reading a whole lot of stuff on Wattpad because I really do like physical books. Like it, it was okay. Um, yeah, I also didn't like how it ended at all, like how the second one ended. But I guess it was a little more closure if people felt they needed it. So number 17 is the fourth Percy Jackson book. I actually really liked this book. I did. I did. Um, I just read a lot of really good books this year. Um, and again, as I always say, I think I'm just a little too old. Um, but this was probably one of my favorites in the series. I, I love the idea of like the labyrinth because I used to play <laughs> don't laugh, the Dungeons and Dragons video game with my dad growing up. And it was like, it was a computer game though. And it was like, you're going through a maze and you come across all these people and there's like different like secret passages. And so this, this one reminded me of that. So I actually did really like this one. It's just that I read a lot of really good books this year. So it's nothing against this. Um, I'm also not gonna explain what this one's about because I don't wanna spoil anything. Number 16 on my list is The Girl in the Run by Abigail Johnson. I also did a video review of this one. Um, in the new year, I'm going to try to do 
technically it is the new year now, let's not talk about it. Um, I'm gonna try to do more book hauls because I buy a lot of books. Um, I don't know, just different types of videos rather than just reviews because even I'm getting a little bit bored of them. But as you'll notice, I, a lot of these have reviews and videos along with them. Uh, this book I did really like as well. Um, this is about a girl and her mom goes, she puts her mom on a dating site, she's just trying to be helpful, but turns out that her and her mom have been like on the run their whole life and she never knew. And uh, so basically she screwed them over, oopsie daisies. And so then they go on a run, they go on the run again and then her mom disappears and so she's trying to find her mom. And it's this big convoluted tale, it's really good. Um, the only reason that I have it, why is it wet? <laughs> Tragic. Anyways, the, it's all like crinkled. I will remember you. Right. Yeah, technically the only reason it's this low is just because it's really short, so there wasn't a whole lot of like character development, which I mentioned in my review. But if you want to hear more about this book, go check out that review. Number 15. Is that 15? Number 15 is The Leaving by Tara Altobrando. I also have a video on this one, and this is about six kindergartners, uh, went missing, nobody knew where they went, and now it's 11. 11 years later, five of them come back, but they don't know where the sixth one is, and their memories are all weird. Like, they have vague memories and kind of deja vu feelings, but they don't really know exactly what happened. This one was good. I did not guess the ending, which for me is usually a big thing, and it was believable enough that I thought it was done really well. Um, there were just times that I was really confused with it. Yeah, if you wanna hear more on that, go check out the review. I'm just gonna do that quick. But. Number 14 is Dorothy Must Die by Danielle Page. This is another one that I think I was just a little bit too old to read, but I mean, I did go out and buy the second book. So I am gonna continue on with the series. Um, I loved The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> loved it, it was so good. I can't even remember the name. <laughs> Uh, growing up. I really really enjoyed it. So this was a cool take on it um, It's basically about um, A girl that gets swooped up swooped up swept up by a tornado in like modern day and she gets transported to Oz But like everything's flipped and Dorothy's actually evil and all the good people are bad and the bad people are good and she uh, joins the society and they want her to basically like infiltrate the castle and kill Dorothy. I really liked the ending of this one too and like that's I was like okay now I know for sure I need the next one um, but again yeah I think I was just a little bit too old but all the ones at the bottom of the list I hate that they're near the bottom because they are really good and I did like them it's just that I read a lot of good books this year. I think I already said this but I, I have a review on this one also. Number 13 is The Merciless 3 by Danielle Vega, yes, I remember her name. And I actually reviewed this whole series. I also had number four in this stack. Um, I reviewed them all in one video, so I'm not really gonna get into what they're about, but if you like things, the first book of this series was described as like, The Exorcist Meets Mean Girls is like the first book in this series. Um, and I like that they didn't all follow the same main character, if that makes any sense. It was like the same storyline, the same type group-ish of people. Like they're all connected, but you don't necessarily need to read one in order to read the other ones. So yeah, number three is pretty good. It's probably my least favorite out of the four. But again, if you wanna know more about that series, check out the video. Number 12 is It by Stephen King. Uh, this one might have had a higher rating if I had read it more consecutively, but I've been trying to read this book for years and I really just couldn't like sit down and read it. So what I would do is read a little bit and then read another book like in between just because it's so long. It's pretty dark, heavy stuff, Stephen King. It does follow like the movie plot, like they are similar, but this definitely has like more detail. So if you enjoy the movies, I would recommend the book. If you're a reader, if you want to get yourself up to that task, this was definitely like a bucket list thing for me, so I'm really glad that I finally finished it this year. And I also have a video on this one. <laughs> um, the only thing that I didn't like about this one necessarily is just that there was a lot of stuff that was really disturbing in it. And I mean, like, I listen to, like, crime podcasts and stuff. Like, I listen to and read a lot of disturbing stuff, but I don't know. This, I might have been a little too young to read this, even now, like, I am an adult. I am 19, and I still just feel like, I don't know. It, it was dark. So just prepare yourself for that. It's definitely darker than the movies, 
But yeah, I mean, I loved the movies, so I was excited to read it, and I'm glad that I did. I just don't want to mess up the numbers. Number 11 is Tidal by Amanda Hawking. It is the third book in the Water Song trilogy. What? <laughs> There's four of them, so they're not a trilogy. <laughs> this is the third song in the Water Song series. <laughs> Third song. Third song. <laughs> no! Why am I having so much trouble with this one? Third book in the Water Song series by Amanda Hawking. I can't believe it took me so long to finish this series. I also have the fourth one in here. I'm probably not going to do a video on these because I finished them in the summer and it is now January. And again, I'm going to try to stop doing series reviews. Uh, I love this series with all of my heart. It's like one of the first series that I was super into as a kid, but it took me so long to find which book? This one. Yeah, I owned the first one, the second one, and the fourth one for years. And so I read the first one like two or three times, which is rare. I almost never reread books, um, but I just loved it. And anyways, finally, I was like, I could just order that book on Amazon. So I did. And yeah, I'm really glad that I finished it, but I'm sad that it's over. But I'll talk a little bit more about it once we get to the next one. Number 10 on my list is The Seller by Natasha Preston. And as you'll see, it says Wattpad Sensation. So this is the one I was talking about earlier that I read the second one on Wattpad. Um, I did really like this book. So this is basically about a girl that gets kidnapped and it's from two perspectives. It's her and her boyfriend and her boyfriend's looking for her. And she's been kidnapped by this guy that basically he kidnaps four girls and he names them all after flowers. It's a really disturbing um, mentality. It's almost like serial killer. I don't want to spoil a whole lot, but so it's Rose, Poppy, and Violet. He calls her Lily, which is why there's a Lily on the front and they're kept in his cellar and he's made it kind of like a home for them and he wants to keep them as like his perfect little flowers. This was a really good book. I really enjoyed this, which I'm really glad because I own like five of Natasha Preston's books. She just keeps putting a book. She put out um, the twin, twins or something and then the lake and she's got a new one coming out soon and I'm like she just keeps like pushing them out uh, but I really like this so I'm glad that she has more books coming out. Number nine is Hidden Bodies by Caroline Kepnes maybe. This is the second book in the You series like the TV show um, and I talked about this one in my book haul which is coming out soon. It'll probably be out just before this one um, and I did really like this one. I saw the second season before I read the second book because I didn't know that there was a second book. Don't attack me. Um, but they were different enough that I still enjoyed them. And it was cool to see like the author's perspective of like what if, like what would have happened. Um, I do really like the TV show, so I recommend that even if you're not a reader. Honestly, if you're not a reader and you watch my videos anyways, bless your soul. Um, but yeah, I did really like this one. Number eight is The Lovely Bones, which I don't have a physical copy of. I borrowed it from Bella. Uh, and I did a video on it as well. Um, I really, really like that book. I recommend that to everybody. And I've actually had people tell me, you know, this is not the kind of book they would have picked up, but they really enjoyed reading it and they're glad that they did and they couldn't put it down, which is kind of what happened to me. Like I had it recommended to me by Bella and her and I read similar books. And I was like, okay, I'll try it. And I'd heard of the movie with Saoirse Ronan. Her. Um, <laughs> I was like, I can't pronounce her name. Um, yeah, it was really good. I still haven't watched the movie, but I will at some point. Um, yeah, honestly, that's just an all around great book. It's about a girl and like right at the beginning she gets murdered and then it's kind of her up in heaven watching her family try to deal with it. And also she's trying to move on herself and just the style of narration in it was incredible. And it really had me like actually crying and laughing out loud at times. Like it really got to me. So that was definitely a really good book. Number seven is the last book in the Water Song series. <laughs> it's called Elegy by Amanda Hawking. Um, this is just... Um, I liked this one more than the third one because it was more like mythological, which Janelle would have liked. It's like Greek mythology, like they added that kind of in to it, which I didn't expect them to do, but it made it, which sounds stupid, but it made it seem like more realistic of a possibility. Um, the first book is about a girl that gets turned into a siren, which is basically like an evil mermaid, um, by these three other girls, because there needs to be four of them. <gasps> Maybe that's why there's four books. 
Anyways, they had a curse put on them a long time ago. There needs to be four of them in order for them to survive. So she gets turned into a siren against her will. And she doesn't want to be a siren, so she's trying to break the curse. And anyways, that's basically what the first one's about. And her sister is also a narrator. So it's like the main girl and then her sister are the two narrators of all four books. And yeah, I just really, this has such a, this series has such a special place in my heart because it's, I read it before The City of Bones, I want to say. So it's probably like the first series that actually got me into reading. But yeah, I definitely recommend this series. Even now, like, so I read that probably in middle school, the first one, and I'm reading this one in university and I still enjoyed it. So really any age range I think would like this series. Number six is Never Wake by Amy Plum. I also <laughs> have a video on this. Um, it's the sequel to Dreamfall, it's a duology and it's about these teenagers that have insomnia and they're doing a sleep study and basically um, there's like a power bump shock something when they're hooked up to all this electrical stuff and they basically get put into like a coma and they're all in each other's dreams. It's honestly such a long concept to try to explain so I'm not going to really go into it. If you think that sounds interesting, check out the video. Um, but yeah, it is really cool. It's from two perspectives. It, there's a med student on the outside that's watching everything and trying to fix what's happening. And then you have at least two narrators. No, I think it's two narratives of some of the people that are inside and they end up realizing that not everybody is who they appear to be. Um, and people are trying to keep secrets, but like you're literally sharing your consciousness. So it's the stupidest idea ever. But yeah, I definitely recommend this duology. The next book is The Merciless Four by Danielle Vega. Um, so again, I talked about this because I have the third one in here. I like this one more, um, again, because they're all different stories. So just this story was more intriguing to me, um, but it did have to do with the first one. Like they're all just minutely connected, but you wouldn't have to read the other ones to read this one. It's just kind of like an Easter egg thing. The only thing I have against this book is I don't really understand how it ended. It was like kind of a cliffhanger, but I know that the series is over. So I'm just a little bit confused, but I probably should just Google and see what the heck went wrong. But yeah, I definitely recommend this series if you like creepy things like exorcisms, I do. So yeah, I like this series a lot. Really anything by Danielle Vega is just incredible. Imagine being able to count down <laughs> from 20. Number four is All In by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the third in the natural series, which I love the natural series. I talked about it in my What I Read in 2020, yes, video. Um, I'm reading the fourth one right now, and it's, anyways, um, it's basically about this girl, and she gets recruited into like an FBI program with a bunch of other teenagers that all have super secret abilities. Not like supernatural ones, but they've all grown up in certain ways where they can really tell if somebody's lying to them, like a human lie detector, like that kind of thing. Um, the main character's are profiler, so she can look at somebody and kind of like tell the kind of person they are or like how they would interpret a situation. Um, and they were originally, the group is originally made so that they could try to solve some cold cases, um, but they end up being pulled into like real life cases, which you're not really supposed to do because they're still kids and the FBI could get in a lot of trouble, but they just do it under the radar because they're just the most helpful group. And the characters in these books are so strong. Jennifer Lynn Barnes definitely has me as a reader for like the rest of my life. Uh, she just came out with The Inheritance Games, which is like all over book talk and has been for a while. So we'll put a picture of that because you'll probably recognize it by the cover. Um, so if you recognize the name, that's probably why. And once I finish the fourth natural book, I will be immediately starting that one. Number three is And the Trees Crept In by Dawn Kurtigich. I also did a video on this one. Um, I loved this book a lot. It was definitely creepy. So I love Dawn Kurtigich's writing. I've also uh, read The Dead House by her. I haven't, she's got one more out that I haven't read yet, but it's on my list. I just can't seem to find it anywhere. Um, I think it's called The Teeth in the Mist, maybe. Anyways, um, this one's about two sisters that show up at this house. It's their aunt's house. I think it's their aunt. And it, the trees seem to just be like getting closer to the house. And there's like a, a strange boy that keeps appearing. And anyways, it's just a very creepy, it is very creepy, very dark book. Probably one of the darkest books I've ever read. But again, I like dark stuff. So I definitely recommend this. Um, and the ending, 
like I had to call my boyfriend and rant about it and then when I got in Janelle's car for me to film the review on this I told her the entire plot of the book because I just can't stop talking about it so yeah <laughs> the next book is The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn um this book was so good if you recognize the name there's a movie on Netflix with Amy Adams in it and I did a video where I compared the book to the movie and also just reviewed the book so go check that out um, this was definitely one of the best books that I read this year. It was so good. Um, and it's about a woman who's agoraphobic. She's afraid to leave her house. And she sees something across the street in her neighbor's house that she really wasn't supposed to see. And when she tries to call the police and report it, they just say that she's crazy because she's on all these meds, because she's agoraphobic. And she's trying to prove that, no, she's right and it actually happened. And then, you know, there's times that she does end up doubting herself. So you don't really know throughout the whole thing, did that actually happen? Like you start to doubt her yourself. So it was a really good thriller, one of the best I've ever read. I highly recommend it, or at least the movie. The movie follows the book almost identically. Like it's a great adaptation. Number two is You Love Me by Caroline Kefnes. This is the third You book. Um, this one was so good. Like, I probably like this one more than the first. I don't know that I can say that. Um, I fell in love with the characters in this. The ending, I was like, what? And if you know anything about the You series, Joe really takes a turn in this one. Yeah, I don't know how else, to, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but I follow the author on Instagram and she said the other day she just finished writing You 4. I'm ecstatic. Um, one of the only things about this this is just a me thing. There was a lot of like, like mistakes in this, like punctuation errors and like word changes. And I just read the second one right before it. So maybe there's a different publishing company. I'm not sure. This one had a lot more like errors in it in that way. Um, but yeah, no, it was actually, dude, I just opened a page 213. Oh my God. <laughs> That's my, my, my number. Anyways, um, my phone number, just kidding. Um, also not. So. Yeah, just the characters in this were probably my favorite yet. Yeah, they're really good, highly recommend. And finally, number one, the best book that I feel that I read this year, although it was a really hard choice, is actually the last book that I read this year, which is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Um, this, I'm just so basic. Everybody loves this book and for a very good reason. Um, this book really had me guessing. I. I had no idea what the ending was going to be and then I had a couple ideas and I was like oh it's obviously this and Grace read it I'm leaving it here so that Janelle can read it next Grace read it and was texting me she was like oh it's obviously blah 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 and I was like mm -hmm, sure and it wasn't um she's like I wish they hadn't made it so obvious and I was like hmm. <laughs> you're wrong um so it's basically about a high schooler she's doing her senior project on a murder that happened five years ago because she doesn't think she doesn't really believe that the guy that everybody says murdered the girl which was her boyfriend at the time actually did it um, and he killed himself shortly after and basically texted his dad and said like I did it um, and then they were like oh case closed but she doesn't actually think that he did it and the further she gets in the more it seems to look that way um, and there's a lot of people in the town that don't seem too happy that she's like poking around so um, this was such a good book, like I can't talk about it enough. I also told my boyfriend the whole plot of this one. Yeah, I don't even know what else to say, just like read it. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of like little details in it that also are important. Um, so try to be a detective yourself when you're reading it, because I'd be reading something and look way too into something and then it had nothing to do with that, but it was kind of more fun to read it that way. Okay, so those are all the books that I read in 2021. I'm hoping to do a video shortly on what I want to read in 2022. Um, I already have one of them off my list and it is January 5th, so go me. Um, and I'm hoping to finish up some series as well, like the Percy Jackson series and the Natural series, and just kind of close up a couple things that I've been meaning to do but putting off. Yeah, I think that that's everything for this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you've read any of these, what your thoughts are, and what you think that I should read next year, this year. Anyways, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys. Number 11 is Tidal. <laughs> um. The Woman in the Window by Jillian Flynn. No. <laughs> That's not at all her name. Which is a group.